Be inspired with the special message from Bishop Macedo. Hello again. We're here to speak about what we've lived. What do we feed ourselves with every day? Who is our strength? Our air? It's the Word of God. And when you know it, you start having true life. Yes, pay attention. I would like you who are watching us now to rationalize with me, including those who are behind the scenes with, you know, looking after the sound system and everything, all the stuff that makes this program possible to reach out to you, all the technicians, the assistants, the pastors, the auxiliary pastors, the bishops, I mean, everyone. Pay very close attention to the following. Very close attention. Pay attention. The Lord Jesus said, pay attention. He said, it is the Spirit who gives life. It's the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. Here, Jesus is making a separation between the spiritual and the material. So he says, the Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, is the one who gives life. He gives life. The flesh, meaning the material things, everything we see in this world, everything that we admire or we dislike, this is it profits nothing. It will always stay behind. Everything will end, including our eyes as well. The words, Jesus said, that I speak, I spirit, and life. He's saying here that the Holy Spirit is the word. God is the word. Jesus is the word. He is the word that became flesh. So when we think of the word, everyone, with, with no exception, rich, poor, whatever is the person's situation, the situation of extreme wealth or extreme poverty, it doesn't matter. Whoever hears the word of God receives the power of life, the power to have a life that is different from the life of those who don't believe in the word of God. That's what God is saying. Pay attention. The Bible says that in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the water of the abyss, which was on the earth. And God said, let there be light. And then, Everything that the Holy Spirit spoke and said came to pass. And the Word of God remains with the same power. Jesus, who is the Word that became flesh, He came into the world and He said and He taught and He gave direction and guidance. Everything that Jesus said, whatever was the Word that Jesus spoke in the past, it came to pass. He brought life. Yes, it, it brought a result. It, something happened. And that's what God wants you and I, all of us, to understand. So that when we absorb the Word of God, everything becomes possible. Everything becomes possible for us. Misery comes to an end and then wealth is established. Not the wealth of this world, but the wealth of God. Because the wealth of this world is too foolish, sorry to say this, but it's too insignificant in comparison to the wealth that the Word of God brings to us. And that's why Jesus said, the Spirit, the Word of God, is what gives life. For example, right now, we are here speaking to you, and I'm sure that all of you 
are amazed, you are admired, you are perceiving the greatness of God's word. So you don't need anyone's favors in order to have a different life, an abundant life. So you don't need to be begging favors. You don't need to depend on good luck. You don't need to depend on anyone, neither people nor things. You just have to believe in the Word of God. And the Word of God in you will bring life. Things will happen through you. And I want to remind you, because not everyone believes in the Word of God. That's true. The majority doesn't believe. The vast majority of people don't believe in the Word of God. That's, that's certain. Nor they know it. Yeah, they don't believe. They don't believe at all. They think the Bible, it's just foolish talk. But look, by the Word, the Holy Spirit brought into existence the things that didn't exist. Oh, Bishop, that's what the Bible says, but I don't know. Well, you can debate, you can doubt, it's fine. But one thing you cannot doubt, because it's true. It's right there before your eyes. You can see it. You can feel it. You can touch it. You can taste it for yourself, which is that by the word of God, the universal church of the kingdom of God is what it is. The word of God. We started with the Word of God. It's not that I am uh, lucky and enlightened and blessed. No, nothing like that. It's just that I or we absorbed the Word of God. We practiced this Word. And then the Universal Church came into existence. However, Pay close attention, because what you perhaps don't know, pay attention, is that just as in the beginning when the Holy Spirit said, what was there on the face of the earth? There was darkness, an abyss. But when the Holy Spirit said, let, let there be light, then that there was light. Let there be dry land. Then dry land was created and he spoke more. And as, as he spoke, then things started happening. In the universal church of the kingdom of God was not different. The same spirit that back there, thousands of years ago said there was light. This spirit used our mouth, has been using our lips, our thoughts, our heart, in order to bring into existence what does not exist in people's life. And I would like you to understand this. Just as there was dark on the face of the earth, right, Esther? And the word of God, the Holy Spirit spoke and things started happening. What happened with us there at the hospital when Viviani had been born in that moment that you didn't even know Viviani yet because the doctors were waiting for me to arrive so they could introduce her to us and you were worried with the situation, isn't it? Do you remember? Exactly. Because I didn't know what was going on. I wanted you to make sure to know what's going on and when we found out it was a chaos. We did not expect that. Didn't expect? But wow. what happened in that moment? That pain that we were feeling, that despair of what we were facing, it made us remember the people that also suffer. So that was our let there be light moment. Viviani was born and the church, the universal church was born. Yes, that's it. Viviani was born. Before a pain. Yes, she was born and brought in the beginning 
that chaos, that frustration. In the moment, we didn't understand anything. Yes, that frustration, that despair, because Christiani had been born perfect, beautiful, wonderful, but Viviani came and her face was this deformed with a, a cleft lip. And, and what happened? When I saw her, I said, my God, what happened? What's going on? I didn't blame anybody. I didn't complain with anybody. I didn't get revolted against anybody. However, however, and I'm speaking of, of myself here, I know that you were disappointed, you were frustrated. And then we, I personally, I speak of myself because I can only speak of what I was feeling. And I can tell you that in that moment, I got revolted and I said, now, that's when I'm going to go against the devil. Instead of being, oh God, what did you do? Why did you allow this to happen? No. I went against the devil. I felt the pain of humanity, the pain of people who suffer. Not just the poor people, but people who have children with uh, a certain abnormality, with problems, a deficiency, like, for example, an, an autist, uh, that don't, people who don't know how to deal with a, a child with autism, because it's something extremely painful and cruel for a mother, for a father. And we, we felt this pain. And then I... I beat on, on the bed and I said, now it's, I'm going to leave everything behind. Because we were in a moment of our lives that we would leave work to go preach the gospel or we would continue in, in our work, in our job. But the conditions were not favorable. I couldn't simply leave everything behind, leave my job, throw everything away and and how would I, you know, feed two children? Esther wouldn't work. I was the only one working. So how was I going to meet their needs? I couldn't count on anybody else. I, have to, I, would, I had to count on myself and on God above all. So in that moment, the, the revolt was born. And I said to Esther, Esther, now if you want to continue in the church that we attended at the time, it's okay, you can go on because I'm going to leave. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm going to leave. And the first thing I'll do is disconnect from that church so that I can dive deep into searching for those who suffer, those who are desperate, afflicted, people who are needy, people who have nobody for them, people who are poor, extremely poor. And then we started working in the difficult places, in communities, in hospitals, with huge social issues and so on. So we started to dive deep into this world to save them with the Word of God. Only the Word of God. Did I have any experience? No. Had I had any course or had any diploma in th with theology, no, nothing. What capacity did I have? Nothing, zero, zero. When I started preaching the gospel, I was so immature, I was so ignorant concerning the Bible that I would only use a, a verse that Jesus spoke. There were like two or three people, you know, in the place where I would go preaching and I would tell them, Listen, Jesus said, wherever there are two or three people gathered in my name, I will be in their midst. This was the motto, the word that Jesus said. We started with two and three people using the word of the Lord Jesus, the words of Jesus. 
their four dear friends. The Spirit is the one who gives life. The Holy Spirit opened our understanding. And true by true, as the saying goes, grain by grain, the hand fills her belly. That's the reality. It's what they say out there. But the, the truth is that today, the church is spread all over the world. And a great army of men filled with the Holy Spirit, people who have this calling, they are dedicated, men and women who are well married, couples of God who go to war. We have pastors there in Ukraine defending, praying for people who are afflicted and desperate, people who are hurt with the loss of their family members. But we also have pastors there in Russia, people who are crying because of their loved ones that they've, they've lost in the war. We have pastors there amongst the Arabs. We have pastors amongst the Jews. We have pastors spread all over this world because we, 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 we have no favoritism. We, we don't make a difference between religion, race, skin color. No, we want to bring to every human being this spirit, the spirit that gives life, the spirit that gives life. And because we believe in this word, then there is nothing that can block the development of this work. And these, dear friends, I'm speaking to you. We are speaking to you. We are passing to you. We are giving to you. You cannot be depending on people or things. You have to make this decision for yourself. Faith is something personal. It's the Spirit of God. Faith is the Spirit of God, you know, boiling inside of you, moving inside of you. And these is what happened. And this is what the Word of God does in the lives of those who believe. It doesn't matter if your situation is of total calamity. It doesn't matter if you are living, you know, on the edge, right on the edge, right there. You, you have 1% of chance of, of living and 99% of chance that you are going to die. God is great. His word is spirit and life. If you believe in this word, meaning you don't feel the word, to believe is, is, is in your mind. You know, I trust, I believe in this word. So place it into practice in your life and this word will give you life and will change the situation of yours. There where you are, it doesn't matter if you have or not the medication you need, if you have a doctor or not, it doesn't matter anything. What matters is that the Holy Spirit that gives you life, he, he gives life. That's what Jesus is saying. Pay attention to the Holy Spirit. Pay attention to my spirit, to my word. Accept my word. Submit to it. Subject yourself to my word, serve my word, and you are going to see what I'm going to do in your life. And that's why he says that the flesh profits to nothing. You may have, how many people have, you know, a, a high level of culture and, you know, they have a diploma, they have knowledge, they've gone to, you know, uni and so on, but they live a life of defeat. How many people have been living in failure with money, with success, with good physical health? You know, even though they are married, they have a family, but they are suffering right now. For example, they have an insomnia, they suffer with nervousness, with fear, with suicidal thoughts, an emptiness, a deep sadness, anxiety. All of these affect what? The soul. And when the soul hears the voice of the Spirit, as right now your soul is hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit, then your soul starts to have hope that there is a solution for your life. Because that's what the Lord Jesus said. The Spirit is what gives life. My spirit is what gives life. 
the Spirit of God took care of us in that moment, Esther. It was very strong, yes or no? Exactly. Because life, the life that was inside of us, is what gave us the strength to bear that moment. It was the Word of God inside of us, which is Spirit in life. It's the same Word that gave order when creating the world, the let there be light, it was inside of us. So it gave us the strength. You feel strong. You feel like a giant because His Spirit is with us and it consoles us, it comforts us, it directs us, and it makes you have the initiative that your eyes did not see before. You have a vision a thought of God inside of you. He gives you this vision, this clarity in your mind. Look, Jesus said, the Spirit is the one who gives life, meaning the Holy Spirit is the one who gives life. And then he says afterwards, the words that I speak to you, the words that I speak to you, it's the words that I give to you, the words that I surrender, I give to you, are spirit and they are life. I feel like screaming, like shouting for everyone to hear my words. The words of Jesus are spirit and life. Spirit means life and life and more life. Dear friends, embrace this word. When a person drinks of this word, when the person absorbs this word, when the person understands this word and they practice this word, things happen. Things happen. 